All right, so I get a lot of questions on how I've been able to grow my YouTube channel from zero to 25,000 subscribers in what's widely considered to be a pretty oversaturated or competitive niche that is productivity and self-development. So in this video, I'll walk through an overview of my process for making YouTube videos all the way from coming up with ideas to scripting the video, filming, editing, making thumbnails, and publishing the final video. Idea generation. So a lot of people get stuck at this initial stage of just figuring out what to even make videos on and don't even get to the later stages of actually putting out videos and growing a channel. And a lot of this I think comes from just a general feeling of imposter syndrome or feeling like you're not really qualified to speak on certain topics. I think that's kind of how every YouTuber feels when they first start out, myself included, you feel like, okay, well, I don't, I know maybe a little bit about these things or I like these topics, but I don't feel like I'm an expert. So like, I'm, I can't make videos on it. There's no way. And to those people, I'd say that everyone who starts out on YouTube generally feels the same way, this imposter syndrome, like they're not qualified to make videos on the topic. And really the only way to get over this feeling is to simply just make more videos. And, you know, I think, making videos in itself is a great way to learn. It's kind of like the whole saying where, you know, teaching is the best way to learn. And so half the time when I'm making videos, it's because it's a topic that either I've recently learned or I want to kind of make sure that I really solidify in my own life. So I make a video about it, talking about my experiences and share that with people. When it comes to actually coming up with ideas and this feeling of not having any completely original ideas, that's completely fine. You know, that's how just creative work works in general. You know, the same goes for music, art, writing, anything like that. Everything is built from a combination of influences, which when combined together, create something fresh and new. So I'll consume all this knowledge through books, videos, courses, podcasts. I'll have my own life experience. I'll talk to my clients and members of my community about their issues and their experiences in life. I'll take all of this knowledge, kind of fuse it together, filter it through my own lens and my own experience, and then share that knowledge slash perspective with the world through my videos. This means I kind of constantly come up with ideas just throughout my daily life, and I can quickly write them down or add them to my Notion database and turn them into a full video later. By the way, click subscribe now if you wanna see new videos from me. All right, scripting. So a lot of people wonder kind of what's the best way to script out videos? Do you write everything out word for word and use a teleprompter? or do you just use some bullet points or what's the deal here? And there's really no best way. I personally like to use a combination of kind of just brief bullet points, notes, and then occasionally scripting things out word for word. Really the only reason I'll write things out completely word for word is if I want to convey an idea in a very specific way with a certain phrasing. I'll often do this maybe for the intro part of the video, which is kind of the most important, which we'll talk about in a minute. But the rest of the time, I like to just keep it more to, to bullet points and then I can kind of add on to that as I'm recording if needed. And then as for the rest of the video after the intro, I like to make my videos personally pretty actionable, organized, step-by-step -step type of thing because I know that for me, I would like videos where it actually, you know, I'm not just entertained by the video and I can actually take something away from it, something actionable to implement into my daily life. And so after I make the, the hook or the intro, I'll kind of dive straight into the practical steps. All right, so let's talk about filming now. And this is probably where I get the most questions, you know, asking how I get my video quality to look so good. And uh, I get comments like, oh my gosh, your, your videos look so good, but like your subscribers are, don't reflect it, blah, 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 whatever, man. But I'll give kind of like an overview of the different types of gear and what's actually important, where to spend your money if you're considering investing into gear. You know, gear alone is not gonna make a video good, but it can definitely help just make things feel more professional and make people want to come back to you and maybe trust your opinions and your advice a little better compared to if you were just kind of filming on a bad camera, the angles look all nasty and stuff. So yeah, audio is definitely the most important thing. You'll hear this a lot more so than lighting, more so than camera. If the audio of your video is bad, it's going to be pretty uh, unbearable. You can imagine it. like if you went to the movies and it was, you know, cinema grade cameras, perfect angles, perfect lighting, great actors, but like the audio sounded like they're talking through like, I don't know, you know what I mean? If the audio is bad, then they're not going to want to sit through the video. I personally use 
this Shure SM7DB microphone. It's like the standard industry standard for podcast microphones. I also like used to do a lot of audio engineering and music stuff. So like I paid a lot of attention to trying to get the audio sounding pretty decent, but you don't need this fancy microphone. You can get just any cheap microphone and there's a lot of options out there. The main thing is you wanna have the microphone as close to your face. That's how you get kind of the better audio quality. You can even use like, just like the Apple like earbuds and stuff, sound pretty decent. Or, or even like, honestly, recording into the iPhone is, is not too bad. But if you're gonna invest money anywhere, I would spend, you know, $50, $100 on a, a microphone and that'll go a long way. All right, lighting. So this is like the second most important part of the filming process. Good lighting will make pretty much any camera look pretty decent. You know, if you get some good lights or just go next to a window, you can just make the camera on your iPhone look really good. But yeah, you basically just want like a big bright light. I recently got this, what's it called? Aperture Light Dome 3, I think. Or no, that's the cover. I forget what the, the actual light is called. Maybe I'll put it in the description. But uh, this is basically just like this giant soft box light thing right here and it creates this nice soft light but you can get really good lighting just by going next to a window you just want to make sure you don't have the window behind you like i do now which is not ideal if you're trying to get light from the window you would have it kind of to the side or in front of you so it's getting a lot of that nice soft light on your face then after that then you can look into maybe better cameras and lenses and th these tend to be a lot more expensive so it makes sense to invest in the audio and lighting first and if you have somewhat of a recent iphone like i've got the newest iphone iphone 15 pro but any of the recent iphones are going to have really great cameras so like i said if you pair it with a nice microphone and a good lighting and you get your framing right with the, the camera so like how I have my video framed where my head is kind of like barely kissing the top of the frame and things just look more natural. You're not like filming the video down in the corner or whatever, then you're gonna have great production value and you're not gonna need to invest thousands of dollars into a camera. And honestly, like for some of the, the B-roll, a lot of the B-roll and the vlogs that I film, I'll just use my iPhone because it's so convenient and stuff and the cameras are getting so good. Now, if you're interested in getting the exact gear that I use, my exact camera lens or anything like that, I think I use the Sony ZV-E10, but I'll put a link in the description to all the gear that I currently use. And so you can just copy me if you want. I've invested a good amount of money into my setup, but I feel like as far as like YouTuber and video setups, it's still kind of on like the lower range. You know, I don't have the most fancy light. I don't have definitely the most fancy Sony camera or lens or anything like that. So I think it's still a pretty reasonable setup for anyone who wants to take YouTube seriously. All right, let's briefly touch on camera confidence. How do you actually film the video and get over the fear of speaking to a camera and articulate your thoughts well? And this is something that I definitely struggled with a lot more in the beginning, being kind of shy and an introvert, speaking to a camera and honestly just speaking in general feels really out of my comfort zone and kind of just difficult to do. So I think it's something that you kind of have to put the reps in over time and also recognize that the fact, the simple fact that you feel this resistance to speaking on camera and it feels kind of uncomfortable shows that there's a lot of room for growth in that area, both in terms of growing a YouTube channel, but also just personal growth, you know, growing these skills of being able to articulate your thoughts clearly and things like that. So definitely just give it a shot and it'll get easier with the more videos you make. One tip that I actually used was in the beginning, I would kind of throughout the day, just use my phone and practice, honestly, just talking to it. So I would kind of vlog my day and just say like what I was doing. And this wasn't necessarily for the purpose of a video or anything. It was just to practice speaking to a camera. And so there's plenty of videos like just in my camera roll of me just like talking about random stuff and they're never gonna make it into a video, but it was, it helped me get over that fear and that, you know, make speaking to the lens feel more natural. So you could give that a try. Okay, let's talk a bit about editing. And this can be a pretty daunting process. You know, you hear a lot about how editing takes the most time out of the whole video creation process, and this can definitely be true. But after editing dozens and dozens of videos myself, there are a few things that I've identified that have dramatically sped up the process and saved me tons of time every month. So after I record my footage, the first thing I do is take the raw footage, import it into my computer and drag it into a software called Gling AI. And this software is a complete game changer when it comes to editing. All right, so now I'll show you specifically how I use Gling in my editing workflow. So you can see here, I've got my raw files, the video file and the audio. I'll take one of them and drag them 
into Gling. It'll process the file. You can hit continue and you'll see a couple options to enhance your video. Now the two main ones that I use, and these will be the major time savers, are cutting silences and cutting bad takes. And this is where really where the magic happens. You can click enhance and edit, and it'll take a little bit to process the file. All right, so now, as you can see, Gling has transcribed the entire video file. And not only that, it has deleted some of the bad takes that I did when recording this video. So you can see anything that's grayed out here has been deleted. So for example, this is what my raw video recording will look like from here. Videos all the way from coming up with ideas to scripting the video, filming, editing, making thumbnails, and publishing the final video. There's all this pause here. And eventually I start talking about this. Idea generation. So a lot of people definitely get stuck at this stage before even publishing idea generation. So I think a lot of people get... So you get the idea. There was a big pause where I don't know what I was doing. I was like checking my phone or something. And then I messed up this line and I said it a couple times here. Now, when I turn on Gling and do skip cuts, this is what it looks like. Editing, making thumbnails, and publishing the final video. Idea generation. So a lot of people get stuck at this initial stage of just figuring out. So it basically skipped all these bad takes until the one where I actually said it correctly. And so it does a really good job and it basically has done this throughout the entire thing. Now I will go back and there'll be different little moments where maybe I need to adjust it a little bit. Like here, it seems like it cut out this line, but it doesn't look like I would want that to be cut out. So what you can do is just treat it like you're editing normal text and I can just put it back in like that. And so I'll go throughout the entire video and you can see like the edited time versus total time, like the total recording time was 55 minutes. It cut it down to 18 minutes. And normally I would have to do this all by hand in Final Cut Pro and it would take me probably at least an hour to do the whole thing. And I know from experience that if I just quickly go through here and make any little tweaks as needed, it will take me maybe like 15 minutes to, to edit this entire thing. And yeah, it's got a few other awesome features here. You can add basically like a buffer. So if you want it to be a little looser with the cuts and have a little more buffer room, you can increase that here or you can decrease it if you want it to be a little bit tighter. Hit apply, you can see it made that cut a little tighter here. So I've tried a bunch of different AI editing tools and Gling is the only one I found that has actually saved me a significant amount of time in the editing process. The other tools, they might allow you to do this rough cut a little more efficiently, but not in the way that Gling does where it accurately transcribes the entire video and cuts out the bad takes automatically. And so you only have to do like the very minor tweaks throughout the rest of the edit. And it's got like these export features. So you can basically take this rough cut and import it into Adobe Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve and then make further tweaks in there and that's where I'll finish the rest of the edit. So truly an amazing tool, super excited to see what the future updates are like and would highly recommend if you're serious about growing your YouTube channel. So I think you can start using Gling completely for free for maybe one video, but honestly, if you're serious about YouTube, the paid plan is only like 10 bucks a month and if you do the math, for me, it's easily a positive return on my investment. If every video, it saves me at least an hour of my time doing that initial rough cut and I make multiple videos per month, I'm easily saving like 10 plus hours per month and it only costs $10 per month. So that's like $1 per hour. And I don't know about you, but I value my time at more than $1 per hour. And I was able to connect with the CEO and co-founder of Gling and they kindly agreed to sponsor this video and give you guys a discount code to get an extra free video edit using Gling. Now, just to clarify, I don't use Gling AI because they sponsored this video. Rather, I've been using Gling as a major process of my video production workflow for a long time now, and therefore they kindly agreed to sponsor this video. So click the top link in the description to get started for free and use the code miles to get an extra free video edit. So after I finish the rough cut in Gling, I'll use the Final Cut Pro export feature to import it into Final Cut where I'll finish the rest of the video edit. And when it comes to editing, I like to keep things pretty simple, you know, no crazy pop-up text retention editing flashing all over the screen or anything like that. I only like to add extra visuals if it helps the viewer better understand the concepts in the video or get more value from the video. So for example, I'll add kind of those title screen labels to each section to kind of divide up the different steps or different parts of the video or I'll add B-roll footage of me kind of applying the concepts in my actual life, which for me, when I watch other videos, helps me get a lot more inspired to actually take action and apply the things that I learn in YouTube videos. Titles and thumbnails 
Okay, so this is probably the most important part of the process or maybe second most important after coming up with the actual idea for the video because if you don't have good titles and thumbnails and the viewer doesn't click on your video, then your camera, your mic, your editing, your lighting, the rest of the video doesn't really matter at all because they will never actually watch the video because they never clicked on it. So I like to put a good amount of effort into my titles and thumbnails. I personally kind of like the overhead shot as you've probably seen from the rest of my videos, but it's kind of tricky to do. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that if you're just starting out because it kind of requires you to get this overhead camera set up and a lot of attention to detail when it comes to Kind of getting the framing right so it looks more pleasing to the eye but back in the initial planning and scripting stage i'll often list out a bunch of different title and thumbnail ideas maybe make a couple versions for thumbnails and then i'll use a site like thumbs up tv which will show you kind of a preview of what it looks like and then you can get an idea of what title and thumbnail combination might look best for your video. And it can also really help to get an outside perspective on titles and thumbnails, you know, someone who is not involved in the video creation process. So you can ask your friends, family, whoever, or sometimes I'll post into my online community and just put a little poll asking for advice on which thumbnail they think would be better. And you know, if you can get the opinions of multiple people, you'll get a better idea of what would actually perform well on YouTube. So if you've got a YouTube channel or are thinking of starting one and want some extra guidance on how to make high quality videos and grow your channel, I recently started a new community to help aspiring YouTubers and entrepreneurs optimize their productivity and grow an audience from zero while managing other life commitments. I put the community at a really affordable price for the initial members who join, but the price will start to increase soon just to keep the community close knit and high quality. So if you're interested in growing a YouTube channel, I would definitely join sooner rather than later. That's the top link in the description. Click that right now to get started. As always, do something today that your future self would thank you for.